Early scientists and thinkers had some trouble visualizing how a force can act over a distance. Now, an English scientist by the name of Michael Faraday studied electrostatic force, which is one example of a force that acts over a distance. And to help us understand how a force, how the electrostatic force can act over a distance, he came up with the concept known as the electric field. So he said that every single electric charge creates an electric field. And to help us visualize this electric field on paper, we use a series of lines known as electric field lines. So once again, Michael Faraday developed the concept of the electric field to help explain how electrostatic force can act over a distance. So let's look at three facts about electric field lines, which essentially describe our electric field created by charges. And let's begin with fact number three. Field lines begin on positive charges and end on negative charges. So let's suppose we look at diagram A. So we have a positive charge. So according to this fact, this states that field lines begin on the positive charge and extend radially outward in all possible directions as shown in a following diagram. Notice our arrows are pointing outward. Now, this also tells us that our field lines will end on the negative charge. And let's look at diagram B. So we have a negative charge that has the same quantity of charge as this positive charge, but this has a negative value. According to the statement, the field lines will end at this point. So that means our field lines extend radially inward when we're dealing with a negative charge. Now, let's continue. The number of field lines beginning and ending at a charge is proportional to the magnitude of that charge. So in this case, our charges have the same exact quantity of charge. So that means the number of field lines going outward and inward for both cases will be exactly the same. But let's look at the following different case in which we have a negative charge and a positive charge and the positive charge has twice as much quantity of charge as the negative one. So that means if this has four, this will have eight field lines. And that's exactly what is shown in a following diagram. So we begin on the positive and on the negative. And notice we have eight field lines here and only four field lines going inward here. Now, let's move on to fact number one. Electric field lines specify the direction of the electric field as well as direction of the force that results from that electric field. And that's exactly why sometimes electric field lines are called lines of force. So the force is always tangent to the field lines at that particular point. So at this point, our force points in this direction. At this point, our force points in this direction. And at this point, our force points in this direction. So it's always tangent to our field lines. Now let's move on to fact number two. The closer the electric field lines are to one another, the stronger the field is. And the stronger the field is, the stronger the force is. And that's because, and that's because force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So if the distance between our field lines increases, the force will decrease. And if it decreases, the force will increase. So for example, the closer we get to our charge, the stronger our field is and the stronger our force is because the distance between our two field lines decreases. The distance is smaller here than, for example, here. So that electric field is stronger here than here. Now, 
Finally, let's examine parallel plates. So let's suppose we have the following two parallel plates. So on this end, we have a positive charge density. On this parallel plate, we have a negative charge density. So once again, our field lines begin on the positive end and extend outward and they go to the other side and they have arrows pointing from the positive to our negative. Now, the electric field lines between the parallel plates are parallel to one another and are equally spaced in the middle region and fringe outward at the ends. But if we examine this region, we see that our electric field in this region is uniform. And we were able to show that in a previous lecture. So in fact, the equation for the electric field between two parallel plates in the middle section is given by this equation. So we take our density or charge density and divide it by our epsilon naught. So this epsilon naught is simply the permittivity of free space. It's a constant and the sigma is also a constant. It's the charge density.